Welcome back to RedHard.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to explore the wonderful world of Entrelac Crochet. Today's tutorial I'm going to take you through step by step of doing this process with your crochet hook. Grab a crochet hook and some yarn, maybe a cup of joe at the same time. We're going to take our time and work our way through the process. I'm going to explain the ins and outs as if somebody was sitting beside me to teach me and I would like to thank my friends Barbara and Diane from the Crochet Crowd Cruises for sitting down and showing me this concept. I'm going to be using the the Red Heart pattern, the Trip Around the World Throw. I'll provide that in the more information link of this pattern for you to be able to follow if you would like to follow the step by step instructions with me as we go along. So without further ado, let me go through some of the ins and outs before we grab our yarn and start with this process. Okay, the first concept that you need to do today is that you need to decide your yarn. In Trip Around the World, it's requiring you to change the pattern colors. And when we work on this, we work from the inside out and I'll cover that in just a moment. But your yarn is very subjective to you. You can change the yarn as much as you want to. You can have solid colors like the Red Heart with Love just like you see here. Or this is James C. Brett Chunky Marble where the yarn changes color so slowly that every square looks unique to itself. And I didn't even have to change the colors that's in the yarn itself. You can achieve this kind of look in a smaller version as well and every little square would have its own uniqueness when it comes to this. This larger size will be an available in another tutorial. Today we're going to be concentrating on the regular size entrelock just like this. So you need to also decide your crochet hook and for myself is that I like to use a, a particular uh, comfort grip and what I notice is that you have to have seven stitches on this hook at any one time. With the comfort grips that you will find is that you can probably get your seven on here very easily and it naturally stops at the gripping so it doesn't ever run into your hands. If you use a crochet hook where it, it doesn't have that you will, may find that it's going to run into your hands a bit and may catch on your fingers. That's something that's really subjective to you. Depending on the size of crochet project that you're working on you may also opt for a Tunisian crochet hook just like so. You, I always find is that when I Tunisianing, I always kind of balance it into the center of my hand instead of working up close like I would with this one is that I'm more further back and again that's very subjective to you. With this particular concept you don't really need a special hook. It's just something to consider when you're working on it. So to understand entrelac, you need to understand exactly what you're looking for. You can do it in two ways. You can either do a very very long chain where you can grow your afghan like rows going up just like so. This is not doing that. This one we grow from the center point out. So for example, let me just uh, clarify. When we go to do this concept, we're going to do our very first square. So nothing else is going to exist but this small little square. In order to do the next level, you see the pink. And so the pink is what's attaching to the square. So that's the automatic next one you want to go to. You will notice in Trip Around the World that there are different colors depending on the round that you're working on. That is very subjective to you. But if you really look at the concept, you'll notice that the colors are transitioning in a complete circle. So for example, we're going to do the green and then we're going to do the pink. So then you essentially have this. So in order to do the next color, you have to do the green. So the green will go all the way around just like so. And when you look at this from like maybe a granny square perspective that you're starting from the inside going out, it makes it very easy. So for example, in this particular one here is that I have stopped my green round. I've started now the, the, the pink going around just like you see and this is where I've stopped it so far because I haven't gone all the way around. So you, if you really can see it, I'm really just going in a massive circle in order to make this work. So if you can see it from that perspective, it makes it so much easier to follow. Another thing that you're going to notice is that the grains of the stitch work will go in four different directions. So for example, we're going to start off with the center. This may not be the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the center. You will notice that the grains are going in different directions and, and what I want to show you here is that it's really subjective to the side of the afghan that you're on. So if you visually divide this into four, like a piece of pie, divide it into four, you will notice that, for example, this section here, the grain is all moving out like this. You will notice this section, the grain is all moving out there, there, and there. And so when you understand that, because I was thinking to myself when I was doing this, why wouldn't the grain all be matching the same way? And the reason for it is that when I go to grab onto the side here is that I'm going to be going bang, 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 bang up. And so when you do that, the grains go up just like so. But because over here, 
do you see how we've been working on this angle? Because the angle has changed over here is that the grains will be going in this direction and that is true then for all sides. And so if you see that happening, do not expect all your grains to go in the same direction because they don't. So let's uh, begin. Grab your crochet hook. I'm going to be using a size 6 millimeter size J today. I'm also going to be using Red Heart with Love. So now let's get started. When working on this project together, I want to show you the concepts right now is that you will see that every square has the most perfect edging that you've ever seen. This edging here and here exists on all four sides. So it's depending on how you grab everything, it's why everything looks so uniform when everything is coming together because every edge that you do, including your corner edges, you will notice that the stitches just continually follow all the way around and are perfect. And that's because of the way that we're going to chain to begin with. So now let's grab our instructions and I'm going to show you how to do it and what I'm about to show you in the first chain totally will make sense and it basically is your basis for this entire project. To begin I want you to start off with a slip knot and we're going to be using our hook to begin. So we want to chain 7 as per the instructions so let's begin to do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So as I explained in the instructions is that you always had a perfect edge. It's because of the way that this chain has been turned over. So for example it says go second chain from the hook. What I want you to do is that I want you to turn that chain around and you will see that there's back um, loops or the spine of the crochet chain just like I would call it. I don't know if that's a technical word or not. But I simply I want to go into that area first and then I grab the yarn and pull through and I hold it on my hook just like so. I then want to work my way through the rest of the chain. You will notice that the spines are now uh, facing up like a Loch Ness monster or any kind of dinosaur that you just keep going in and grabbing the yarn and pulling through and just leave it on your hook. So just going in, pull through and leave on your hook and you want a total of 7 of these. Essentially what you're doing with the first box as you're working away across is that you're doing Tunisian crochet for this in order to get it started. So you will go all the way to the end and you will end up with 7 particular loops. Now I train my eyes to look for the first four and then I go whoop there's four, there's three left, I know I have seven. So let's begin the next process to go back to where we came from. To go back in the other direction it's just like Tunisian crochet. We're going to grab the yarn and we're going to just pull it through one loop only. So that gives you the nice edge on this side and now grab the yarn and go through two and pull through two all the way back until you get all the way back to one loop on your hook like so. And so what's going to happen is that remember how, sh how I showed you the grains? These lines that are facing the up direction are your grains that are sitting down on top of your project when you looked at it. So essentially let's start off your next round. Each one of these grains, so you see that the grains are going in the up direction, you need to have a total of 5 of those stacking on top of each other in order to know that you have a finished square. So to begin the next square you're simply just going to slip into your hook in behind the first one that's facing up the vertical direction. Grab the yarn, pull up and just hold it on your hook. So we're now going to start collecting our stitches once again. We look for the very next one just in behind. You will find what when you're learning this concept your tension may be a little bit more tight. So for me it's just very easy because I've been practicing quite a bit. So I just keep going back all the way so I get a total of 7. So see how I just grabbed 4, I got 2 left. That means I still have this vertical that's left on the edge. Pulling it through and so now I have my 7. So to go back to where I came from I immediately just wrap the yarn, pull through one loop only and now I'll pull through 2 and 2 all the way back. So nothing difficult about that. So we can see now I have two rows because I'm counting by the grains that you can see. So I have one and two. So let's move in the, uh, the other direction again. So we're just going to go in and just immediately pick up the vertical um, strings that you see and just keep collecting them as you go and make sure you get all seven. Eventually you're going to start trusting yourself that you will have all seven on board uh, and uh, the counting process becomes a lot less. So to go back in the other direction we immediately just wrap the yarn, pull through one loop only to start and then everything is through two going back. And remember we need a total of five. 
So I'm gonna show you something. Do you see how you see the gapping spaces? These stitches are not completed until you go back in this direction right here. So essentially when you're finishing off this you're gonna notice that you have to come back and that's something that you need to look for because it's actually to your advantage to know that. So let's uh, move back. We only have three grains going up so we need a total of five and we're just gonna work our way back up. So when you're working with color transitional yarn this really gets exciting because you'll see the colors just transforming right between your eyes. Four and three I'm good. I'm gonna wrap and pull through one loop only and then pull through two. Just like you can see. Okay so now I have four grains going up. One, two, three and four. Remember even though that this is showing gapping spaces it's still done. We have to keep that in mind because it's going to make sense in just a moment. So let's uh, keep going. We only have four. We need a total of five. Just like you see. And remember don't forget that one on the edge. Just like you see. So you got three and or four and three. And now let's wrap. Pull through. And now that was through one and then pull through two for the remainder. Once this project gets bigger this rolling effect will settle down as each square is added and then you may want to block this at the end. So now I have a total of five and you can see that this is practically a square which is what you're looking for anyway. So you have one, two, three, four and five. Yes you have the gapping but now it's time to bind this off so that we can finish right in this corner here. So let's uh, begin to do that. So we're just going to slip behind the first uh, vertical, grab the yarn, pull through and through and we're just going to go into the next one. Grab the yarn, pull through and through and we're basically binding this edge off creating the perfect stitch work like I showed you uh, before this particular clip. So we're just going to bind off right to the end and now to finalize off this project I'm going to switch my colors at the end of this particular square and just to follow the pattern along and now essentially you have the very first starting square of your particular afghan. So let me uh, just uh, change this yarn and move along to the next part of this project. To change my yarn all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to snip the yarn with a generous tail that I'm going to be using at the end to be able to weave this in and I just essentially just want to grab the yarn and just pull through like this. And so then I'm going to leave that so it falls in behind the afghan so we're ready to go for your next round. So let's begin. I'm going to use color white for my next part of this tutorial. So I want to take this opportunity to explain to you the magic number of seven. Why is seven such an important number and why do you care? The reason why you care is that you will see that there's, there, I'm just calling them grains. These are the vertical strings that you will see five. One, two, three, four and five. And so wh what you're thinking is seven. Where is seven coming from? Seven is also the outside. Okay so you have your five grains in the middle you have six on one side and seven on the other and when you're working in either direction you will notice that concept to be true. That you also see five rows one, two, three, four and five so then the outside of attaching on both sides of that also are your six and seven. So now it's up to us to create what we call the L shape. And so the L shape does not exist on this starting one and so what we have to do is we have to create it. Now the L shape exists because we need to be able to build on one side and go up the other. But we don't have that luxury on here because we're just starting. So for any part of this project and you will notice this on the corners of your afghan is that you have to create this L if it doesn't already exist when the, within this. So let's begin. I'm going to attach my white and show you that concept next. So to begin I'm going to attach my white. I'm just going to create a slip knot and I'm going to weave in my tails at the end. And what we need to do is that we need to grab this one by any way you want. It doesn't really matter and which corner you're going to grab either way it's going to work. So what we want to do is that I'm going to come on to a very corner just like you see here and I want to grab the yarn and just tighten it onto the hook and I want to just attach it. So I'm just going to pull it through and then just pull just like so. So it's now attached. And so now I want to chain up six. So the magic number is seven. Why is the magic number now changed to six instead of seven? Because the attaching on this row in is your seventh. So what we want to do is this is classified as one that attaching two, three, four, five and six. So second from the hook just like I showed you with before with the, the back spining we just want to start collecting our stitches 
on the back side only. So just, so go in, pull the yarn through and hold it and just move yourself all the way down. By the time you get to the attaching part, you are going to have six on your particular hook. Okay, so we go right in to this one here and now we have our six like I just promised to you. So the seventh is where you've attached it right in and pull through. So now you have your seven. So you have your three and four and just like you did before, what I want you to do is just wrap the yarn, pull through the first one and then pull through two going all the way through. And so now we want to go back again. So we're just going to pick them up. This is exactly what you already have done. The difference is now that you are just working with another block. Now here's what your tip is. Make sure that this has not spun around on you. The other side will look knitted. You want to make sure you're looking at the concept where you can see the grains right in front of your face. So as you get your six on board, right, your seventh is in the next available stitch. Okay, it's not the same one, it's the next one. So the grains are matching each other. So each row is going to match each other. So essentially when I go through, let me just redo that one more time. When I go through, just like so, I want to make sure I have my seven, which I do, and then just grab the yarn, pull through the first one, and then just work and pull back through the two as you go along. So let's pick them up again. So this is going to be your row three. Okay, and then we get back and we go to the very next one that's available. So the rows are matching the rows. So then once you have your seven, see I'm automatically wanting to do it, you just grab the yarn, pull through the first one and then just keep going to pulling through your two. So, okay, so let's pick them up again. So I find myself always just ensuring that I do have my five. Um, there's been a couple of times I have to admit in the sampler where I've messed up and I had an extra one. Sometimes you just got to fake it or make it. So once we get through, we just go on to the next one. You see how we're just working our way up, pulling it through the first one and then through two, all the way back down. Make sure I'm grabbing through perfectly. You can see that the grains are taking effect. I now have four, one, two, three, and four, and going back in, picking up. So this will be the fifth. And last time, going all the way across. It's not the last time I'll be going all the way across. It's just the last row. And we essentially come into the, the very top one here. Ra okay, wrapping, pulling through one and then through two. All the way back. So remember what I just I explained to you how we had that gapping space when we left off. You're going to see a gapping space right here. So we're going to do the bind off just like we did. So into the first one pulling it through like so and we're just picking them all up and going in and on the very last one we just want to go into the very next one that's available right in the corner. So I'm not going into the same one, going into the next one that's available like so. Just like this and pulling it through and that's be how you bound off. So then we have to begin our next area which is the next square which will be sitting directly on top. So we've just done the side and so we're essentially going to work our way around the middle of this pink one. So I'm going to show you again on how to get started with this particular one. Once you, I'm going to do it once again and then you can get the concept of doing it yourself going all the way around. So to begin again, we have to chain up six and we're doing six because the joining here counts as seven. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Second from the hook, we come into the back spine area and start collecting them again. We want to make sure that this project has not turned on you. That was one of my key concepts for learning with Barbara and Diane is that I was always having the project turn. And so now we have our six and we essentially come back down in to where we started and pull through like this. So now we have our four and three. So we wrap and pull through the first one and then wrap and pull through two all the way back down. So we're going to collect these all again. So just going back in, collect, 
total of seven again. Okay, there is my six and we just move up to the next stitch that's available. So do you see how this first row matched this first row? So then when you go to the next one higher, this row is gonna match that one. So we pull through the first one and pull through two for the remainder of the row. Okay, collect them again. We want a total of five rows going up. Okay, and so then I've got my six, so that means that next one is into the side again. Pull through the first one and pull through two all the way back. Okay, let's collect them again. Okay, I have my six on board. That means that I have to go into the next one that's available. So I'm just working my way all the way up. Oops, I have to pull through the first one first, then pull through two. I kind of never did that on my sample, so I'm kind of struggling a bit. <laughs> so picking up. You know, people teach you different ways and different methods, and I wasn't taught that. I was just reading that in the instruction. I'm like, well, I gotta follow that if it's in the instructions. So I'm picking it up. I'm going to the next one that's available. And you're thinking to yourself, well, gee, you're really not on the corner. Just go with me here. Just bear with me because you are on the corner. You just don't realize you are. So pull through the first one and pull through two, all the remainder. And we now have our five on our five rows for this particular box. So one, two, three, four, five. The outside box, you see how you see the gapping? That means that we have to bind off. So we're just going to pull through both, going, going in, pull through both, and work our way back to the other side. And when you bind off, do you see how it changes from being an open stitch to closing it? And our final bind off is into the corner, the very corner of the next, of the, of the pink box. So what I want you to do is I don't want you to go all the way around this particular box just like you'd have seen. Do you see how the grains just turn direction? I promised that would happen and it is. So when we come back, I'm going to uh, begin again and I'm going to show you the next level to go all the way around. So continue to do that same concept all the way around. So I've just finished up going all the way around and you will see that the white now is attaching around the pink squares. So essentially I'm just going to fasten this off so I've already cut it off line. So you'll notice here that you may see extra spaces in between the one corner that you finish. When you come around and do the next part of these squares, everything kind of comes together and you have to trust in that in order to make it work. Another key concept is that when we go to start the next round, say we did not want to change the color or you're using color transitional yarn, you can never ever start from the bottom of an L. So look at this like a, an L instead of anything else. So if you see it as an L, you always have to start off your next square in a top corner so that you can come down and up. And so if you can understand that concept, it just makes it a lot easier. With color transitioning yarn, I did slip stitch a few times going up, but you know what? It becomes very obvious in your project. So I would recommend that you fasten off and then refasten on into a corner edge. So while we'll do that, I'm going to fasten on to the next corner and get you started. This co key concept, I'm going to show you how to start into the divot area and of course what happens when you don't have the imaginary L and then around again. So let's begin this concept again. To begin again, you can just choose any corner you wish. You, can, you might want to be uh, having a rhythm to it or depending on what it's up to you. So we're just going to simply just attach it to an outside stitch of one of the corners. And let's bring this around and we are going to just attach. So we're not going to do a chaining of six. The reason for it is that the L shape exists. So if you just turn your work, you can see an L. And every time you see an L, you do not start off with just doing um, a chain. Uh, what we want to do is just work our way across the bottom and work our way across the top of, or the side of the next box. So essentially what we're going to just do is just slip your hook in behind the stitches or into the stitches that you see and grab the yarn and pull up. And just keep grabbing them as you go. You will have a total of seven. So here comes that magic number seven again. Going all the way. So we got five. 6, okay? So we've got 6, so the 7th is on the next box, right there, like so. So now we're just going to pull through 1 
and go through the two all the way back. Do you see how easy that was? So when you don't have to chain up that six, it just speeds you along. So then essentially we're now going to start working our way back up again. So we're just immediately going in behind the verticals. Just collecting your stitches up. Hopefully you've got this concept by now because I'm starting to speed up. And you have your six again. And that means that the seventh is the next one in, in line in the box right beside it. And we come all the way back again. Just like you see. So we want to collect. Just like so. So you have your six. So that means that your seventh is on the neighboring box. And then we come all the way back again. Kind of collect. So we want a total of five rows just like we've done already. And five will take you to the immediate and to the top of the meta of the height of the next box beside it. So every row, you see how there's all stitch work lined up? Every row is going to get something. And it's just one of those. It's so easy to be able to get that concept once you get it into your head. And uh, I've been avoiding this stitch for years, not realizing how simple it really is. Sometimes you just need a really good teacher in order to um, teach yourself some of these concepts of crochet just so you can ask the questions. And then we're immediately, the next one is right there. So I just kind of pulled it apart just to see. And I believe that I have my five. Now I haven't been counting five, it's just I've been working on this pattern so much that my eyes are trained to automatically notice that there's five. So we're going to count the grains. So one, two, three, four, and five. You will see that there's gapping. So we're just going to bind off. So just slipping in behind and pulling it through. And you want to do those for all of the verticals going across. And this will take you to the other side of the top. Okay, and when we bind off, don't forget that we want to go into the very next stitch that's available on here, onto the white. We don't want to go back into an area that's in the in the pink to bind off. So now we are going all the way around. But right now we do not have an L. Do you see an L? No, there's no L. The L is over here, but we're not over there. So in order to create this, this is the one corner. So these white here are representing the corners of your afghan. So what we have to do to create the, the corner or to create the imaginary L, you have to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And immediately second from the hook, we want to come back into that spine area. It, the spine area just makes a beautiful finish if you're not convinced on that yet. And just coming and collecting your stitches going back. And by the time you get back to the beginning of the chain, you should have six. And then the seventh, if you've already are following me along, the seventh, so there's your six, is on the project itself. Just like so. And so then we just do our twos all the way back. So I don't know why I kind of begrudge doing those corners. The imaginary L is actually really simple. It's just that one little stitch of doing that chain is like, oh my, you know, I just got to do that again. But it is actually, you know, it's only happening on one area of your, of your afghan. So we have our six again. We just immediately come to the next stitch available. You can clearly see it. And just come all the way back. Okay, whoops, I missed that last one. We collect it one more time and then collect. Here we go, all the way back. So with this particular afghan styling, you're going to notice that your stitch work is really thick. So this is one of those projects where it turns out really nice. On the back end, it will look knitted. And on the front end, it will have this unique look to it, which is really desirable. A lot of designers are using this concept as well. It does produce a beautiful looking fabric. With the right yarn and the right project, this is really quite stellar. So going all the way back. I'm speeding my way along now. So essentially what's going to happen is just like granny squares as you get bigger they, there's more boxes in between the corner edges and therefore you will find that it just goes so much quicker as you're going across. 
So I believe I might have my five done. I haven't counted. My eyes are just automatically thinking, oh, you got five on your hook. Let me verify that. So one, two, three, four, five. We have our gapping, which is the fifth one, and we want to bind off. Like so. And remember the final bind off is into the next square. So don't forget to do that. So essentially now we're ready to move on. Now this next one we are back in and there's the imaginary L right in front of your face. So essentially we don't chain. We just immediately pick up these stitches that are in the box going down the other side of the white. And we immediately just pick them up. There should be six complete on the one side of the box. We have six, so then the seventh is in the next box right beside it. And then that, and then we just do our twos all the way back. You can always uh, see, like I almost just put through the wrong stitch. If you don't have a total of five grains going up, then you notice something's wrong. And uh, that's when you need to start just making sure. Uh, with the larger version of Afghan that I did with the with the 10 stitches is that I have to count. I'll be a little more vigilant at counting in order to get it to work. Um, but it's totally worth the effort. No doubt about that. So we're just working our way across. So just back and forth. So if you're doing Tunisian work, this is how you would attach it to your neighbor Tunisian as well. So just because these squares are so small doesn't mean they have to be. This is just for this particular design that they are. This is kind of a, almost a regular size of entrelac. Depending on the crochet hook that you have in the project, you may want much bigger squares in order to pull it off. And either way, you're, as long as it's in square, it's in balance. So um, while I'm doing this, so how would you manage that? So if you did five rows tall, that means that you would have to have five grains going across and then six and seven. So for example, say I wanted to have 10 grains across, then I would have a total of 12. So I'd have 10 of the grains in there and then 11 and 12 which would be your edge and then I would have 10 rows going up. So that would be how you would stay in balance if you wanted to do that. So you just have to make sure whatever you're doing in the horizontal, you're also compensating for it in the vertical. And I think I'm back to the beginning again. Okay, where I'm going to bind off. So one, so I'm just going to count. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to bind this off now to finalize that square. And essentially, I am at the point now where I'm just based on what I've done already. So see how this one's standing up by itself? See, there's no there's no L for me to go into. Oh, I've got to make sure I bind off right to the beginning of the next one so that I'm starting into the next one. And so essentially now there's no L for me to go into so I have to chain my six. So I'm going to leave that for you. When we come back I'm going to show you how to be able to make a flat edge. You will notice that trip around the world um, there is actually it just leaves it just like so. But what if you wanted a flat edge because I know people are going to ask for that. How do you achieve it? And it's actually really simple. So when we come back I'll address that next. I'm about to attach the yarn. I'm going to show you how to do a flat edge. I notice on the crochet crowd as well as redheart.com that people don't like necessarily rippled edges. They love flat edges. It just happens to be a thing people like. No doubt about it. So I'm just going to attach it and if you were doing an entire afghan you will end up with all these these V shapes or these L's in between. So you'll have a whole number of them. So how would you get a flat edge? The reason why I'm doing this for you is that I want you to visualize this. Most people are thinking you're going to treat it like a fan and going all the way from one side to another. In actual fact you're not. So in order to do it, you, because we are doing our rows going straight up just like so, we have to get ourselves to the point where in the last row we're here automatically. So to do that we're just going to collect our stitches just like you would doing it any way else. So we want to get our, our six onto the box that's here and our seventh is onto the one on the other side. So we have our six and then our seventh isn't over here. So let's begin. So I'm just going to chain my, my uh, pull my one through first and now I want you to go pull through two, 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 two and now there's three left on my crochet hook. I want to pull through all three. 
just like so. So now I, what I want to do is that I want to immediately just skip the first one and go to the second and pull up. And we want to collect again. So now there should only be five here and so then the sixth is over here. So we're getting smaller. So let's chain one, pull through first and then through two, two, two. Now there's three left. I'm going to pull through all three. We're going to skip the first grain and go into the second one over and pull up and through. And so there should be four. And we go into the side just like you see. And now you got three left. We pull through all three. So essentially getting smaller. So we skip the first grain that we and go into the second. Pulling up. Going into the next. Okay. And we pull through two. We have three left. So we're just going to go through. And now we're just going to right immediately. We're going to go right into the very edge. Just like so and just slip stitch. And that would be how you would we get a perfect flat edge. So if a, if there was another box here you'll do the same thing. You just pick up everything and immediately just start decreasing as you work across. So that would be how you decrease. So there you have it. This is how to complete an entrelock crochet afghan. This was using a total of seven stitches to going across. Remember you can be very subjective in order to make sure that you can make it work for you. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. As promised in a future tutorial I'm going to show you this uh, particular concept but in a much larger square just in case you would like to see that concept materialize right before your eyes. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. We'll see you.